Hello everyone, so we're looking at section 5.2 from the Nelson textbook and here are some questions that I selected from the homework. Feel free to scroll for the question that you need to help with from the scroll bar below. Starting with question number one, we have that a bobsleigh with four people on board has a total mass of 610 kilograms. How fast is the sleigh moving if it has a kinetic energy of 40 kilojoules? Alright, so let's sort of visualize this. We're talking about the bobsled, so we suspect some snow or ice. Okay, so here we have a bobsled with four people on board, and it has a total mass of 610 kilograms. And they're asking us how fast is the sleigh moving if it has a kinetic energy of 40 kilojoules. So let's change the kilojoules to joules. So multiply by 1,000, so 40,000 joules. And since kinetic energy is the energy of motion, and we want to be able to determine it at a single point in time, so they're asking us the speed such that when this bobsled has this much energy. This means that we're going to have to use our formula for kinetic energy, where the formula is a half mv squared. And all we're going to have to do in this, it seems that just sub in the value and isolate for the speed. In order to isolate for the speed, I'm going to multiply both sides of the equation by 2. because that will get rid of the fraction. And to isolate for the speed, then I need to divide both sides by the mass. And then to isolate for the speed, all you have to do is take the square root on both sides of the equation. Great, so now that we have the expression, all we have to do is substitute in the values that we were given. The mass was 610, and the kinetic energy in joules was 40,000. We get approximately 11.45 meters per second. Okay, that's quite fast, but then again, the bobsleigh is a dangerous sport. They're on ice usually and they travel really, really, really fast. Uh, you should check it out. It's very famous in Canada. And there used to be a famous movie, which is the Jamaican bobsled team, which I still recommend. Quite a funny movie. A good old movie. Great, so let's go on to the next question. In this question, we have a 0 0.16 kilogram hockey puck starts from rest and reaches a speed of 22 meters per second when a hockey stick pushes on it for 1.2 meters during a shot. They're asking us for what is the final kinetic energy of the puck and to determine the average net force on the puck using two different methods. First, let's try to visualize this. Okay. So this puck, it has a mass of 0 0.160 kilograms, and we're given that the puck starts from rest. So the initial speed is going to be zero. And after it's been hit, it reaches a speed of 22 meters per second. So the final speed at some later time it's going to be 22 meters per second. And it traveled for approximately a displacement of 1.2 meters. Our displacement, we're going to assume is to the right, 1.2 meters, let's call the right forward direction. And for our convenience, we're going to set all the positive values to be to the right. 
which includes the final velocity vector. So that should be to the right as well. So we can add forward if we want to be more technical. All right, so to calculate the kinetic energy of the puck, that's what they're asking us at the end. So in other words, what is the final kinetic energy? That's our unknown. And they want us to determine the average net force on the puck. Now to calculate the final kinetic energy, we just have to take advantage of the formula. EK final equals to a half MV final square. We were given the mass of the puck and it's in kilograms, so it's good. We can use it. And the speed is in meters per second, so we can also use it. When you're calculating this, just be careful with the square for the speed. Make sure that you put it into your calculator. So you get approximately 38.72 joules. Great, so that was part A. For part B, they were asking us to calculate the average net force in two different methods. Now the one that stands out right away that I can do for sure will be, I know from my work kinetic energy theorem, the work is the change in kinetic energy. And since they want the average net force, so I could put the net force during the displacement equals to the change in kinetic energy. Now, since I am trying to isolate for the net force, I'm going to divide both sides by the displacement. And the change in kinetic energy is just the final kinetic energy minus the initial kinetic energy divided by displacement. But because it starts from rest, the initial kinetic energy is zero. So this means that my net force is just going to be 38.72 joules divided by 1.2 meters. This gives me approximately 32.27 Newtons. So that's going to be our first method. So the first method, we took advantage of the two definitions of work, which is the change in kinetic energy and also force times the displacement. And we're assuming that the force and the displacement are along the same direction. So that's why we assume the angle is to be zero. So there's the first method. Let's see if we can come up with a second method. For my second method, I think we're going to use the Newton second law. Let's see if that will work. Net force equals to the mass times acceleration. And in this case, we are going to have to find the acceleration through kinematics. Because recall, we have the final velocity, the initial velocity, and the displacement. So we can use one of the equations of motion. And the initial speed is zero. So that's going to help us to simplify. And we want to solve for acceleration, so we can divide both sides of this equation by 2 delta d. And then putting in our values, the final speed was 22. The displacement was 1.2. So let's calculate the acceleration. It's quite a large number. Hopefully I did it correct. 201.67 meters per second square. So once I have the acceleration, I can then substitute that into Newton's second law formula because we had the mass. So the mass of the puck was 0 0.160 kilograms and we found the acceleration to be 201.67 meters per second square. So let's calculate what that will give us. Hopefully we get the same value. Yeah, this gives us approximately 32.27 Newtons. You can double check that, I'm not lying to you. 
So yeah, that's how we can find two different methods. So we can use Newton's second law or we can use work method, but they both give us the same answer. So that's really reassuring. Now in this video, I'm gonna have one more example from the homework questions, all right? So please stay tuned. Okay, this is the last question. It looks quite long, complicated, so let's take a moment. You can read it on your own first and then let's read it together. Question three. A large slide is shown in figure 8. A person with a mass of 42 kilograms starts from rest on the slide at position A and then slides down to positions B, C, and D. Complete the following using the ground as the reference level. Okay, that's a lot of information already. Let's put it in so we don't forget what they were telling us. Assuming the ground is the reference level, this means that the height is going to be zero at the ground, which is our zero potential line. So our potential energy is going to be zero at the ground. And there's a person, random person, they're going to be sliding down the slide and they have a mass of 42 kilograms. And they also tell us another piece of information that's useful. This person starts from rest. So the initial speed, in other words, the speed at point A equals to zero meters per second. Okay, so that's all that they were giving us in the question. Now, let's see what they're asking us to find. Calculate the gravitational potential energy of the person at position A. So they want EG at A. So our formula for potential energy, given we set up the coordinate system at the ground, is MGH. And the height above the reference level, they gave us a 16 meters. So we just have to put in the mass, 9.8 and 16. Let's see what we got. Okay, so this person at point A has potential energy of 6,585.6 joules. Let's call this EGA, potential energy at point A. Part B, the person has a gravitational potential energy of 4,500 joules at position B. So potential energy at position B equals to 4,500 joules. How high above the ground is the person at position B? So they want us to find the height at point B. So this is quite easy. Let's just use the formula. MGHB. And we're looking for the height, so in this case we can divide both sides by mg in order to isolate for the height. Okay, let's put in the value that we're given for potential energy at this point. The mass is 42 and g is 9.8. Let's just calculate this. We know we got it correct if it's less than 16, so let's let's hopefully we got it right. Yeah, we got approximately 11 meters. Okay, so part C in this question asks us, the person loses 4,900 joules of gravitational potential energy when she moves from A to C. How high is the person at C? So the change in gravitational potential energy, which they're saying from the point C, from the point A. So here I'm using final minus initial. The final was point C and the initial was point A. So final minus initial. And this change of potential energy is 
negative 4,900 joules because they lost energy. And the potential energy at A we were given on, actually no, we calculated that before, which was 6,585.6. Okay, so there I just had to move the energy that we're given to the other side so we can isolate for the potential energy at C. And let's just calculate it now. So the potential energy is 1,685.6 joules. That makes sense. And we were asked to find the height at this point. So we just have to put in that the potential at point C equals to mgh at the height at point C. So let's isolate for the height at C. four point one meters let's see if that makes sense it should be less than b b we found it to be 11 c 4.1 that makes sense that, that seems reasonable and the last part to this question is what is the person's gravitational potential energy at the ground level at point d well, we define the ground level to be our zero potential. So by definition, the potential energy at point D is going to be zero. So the potential energy at point D equals to zero joules. Great. Uh, please hit like if you enjoyed this video and then stay tuned for other homework questions where I help you with your Nelson textbook homework. Until next time.